Hello and welcome everybody to 2KCW Unfinished Business. We are coming to you live from the first arena in Elmira, New York. As we get a show kicked off here tonight for the tag team titles, Smooth as Silk. Getting their first opportunity at the tag team titles. After a count of victory a couple of weeks ago by the champions. As we addressed last week, this is going to be a false count anywhere tag team match for the tag team titles. And here comes Akira Matsumoto and Jushin Sakamoto of the Awakening. Obviously, Yamashita. Here, Yamashita, the Pink Ranger, is not allowed at ringside here in this Falls Count Anywhere match. As he is, Tornado Tag Rules. And that's what they're fighting for the 2KCW Tag Team Titles. A long legacy for those tag titles. Even including two members that have become future members of the Dark Order. Stu Grayson and Evil Uno. Sakamoto pairing with Curtis and Isaac York with Matsumoto. The Green and the White Rangers. Taking it to smooth as silk right now. And of course, our main event here at Unfinished Business, a first blood match for the 2KCW Heavyweight Championship. Eric Anderson versus Leroy Punch Beef. Still can't believe that's a sentence I gotta say every week. And of course, Dizzy Jet has a mystery opponent. She called out the likes of even the main roster of Reign of Chaos Wrestling. Jushin missing the elbow drop. Drop toe hold from Isaac. Taking it to Matsumoto. Dizzy Jack calling out anybody across promotions and even experience levels to face her tonight at Unfinished Business. Sakamoto with a spinning back fist and a chop. The outside on Dynamite Curtis. And Isaac still taking it to Matsumoto inside the ring. The referee better have two pairs of eyes, one in the front and one in the back of his head. This match can end anywhere. Cover here. Yeah. Let's see, can Isaac get the tag titles for Smooth as Silk? Not yet. Matsumoto and Dynamite Curtis fighting in the entryway. Sakamoto went for down below outside the ring. Referee just getting to and Isaac not able to break up the pinfall in the awakening. Retain the tag team titles here at Unfinished Business. Due to some kind of error that Isaac York was not able to break up the pinfall. To save the match for him and Dynamite Curtis. As we take a look at the replays, there's the down below from Jushin Sakamoto.
Well, that's going to be the final decision that the Awakening retain their tag team titles here at Unfinished Business. There's the old locker room of tag teams in the back. We can challenge for the tag team titles, but coming up next, Dizzy Jet in her open challenge. Dizzy Jet as she makes her entrance here. Facing a mystery opponent. I don't know how wise that is. When you tout yourself as the most winningest wrestler in 2KCW, but be a big opportunity for, again, anybody in the training school or even anybody across lines of other promotions, either in GAW or in the main roster of RCW or the GAW Academy or anybody in that matter. And who's going to be the challenger for Dizzy? No way. No, f no way. Beth Phoenix. Elmira's own Beth Phoenix. The WWE Hall of Famer. The multiple time women's champion in WWE. She may have gone to Buffalo, New York for wrestling training, but she is born and raised here in Elmira. What a hometown crowd. Pop for Beth Phoenix. I've got goosebumps right now. This is... This is unbelievable. Beth Phoenix making her 2KCW debut. Here we go. Flying double axe handle from Beth Phoenix. Jet immediately taking her down. What a feather in the cap this would be, no pun intended. Facing off against Beth Phoenix and for Dizzy to beat her here in her hometown. A pair of dragon screw takedowns from both women. Jawbreaker from Phoenix. Beth Phoenix is one of the toughest women to ever step foot in a 20 by 20 ring. And I say that not only for just for her dominating performances in the ring, but in a Royal Rumble match a couple of years ago, she was busted open. The doctors wanted her to be taken out of the match, but she was still willing to go. And even in her first match in WWE facing Victoria, crucifix bomb from Dizzy Jet. Beth Phoenix got slapped right across the face and dislocated her jaw from Victoria on her first night on Raw. Look it up, it happened. Dizzy Jet off the ropes, duck under into the elevated hip toss. Jawbreaker and a running clothesline from Beth Phoenix. And cover here, center of the rain, only a one count for Dizzy Jet. And Dizzy into the corner, running uppercut, knocking down Phoenix. And an innovative striking combination in the corner. 
from Dizzy Jet following up with a close uppercut. And Dizzy looking immediately for the diss track. To the Glamazon. Beth Phoenix cover here. Norway puts a lot of women away with that move, but Beth is not like most women. Beth Phoenix kicks out of the diss track. Double underhook DDT from Dizzy Jet. Into the corner. Beth has got to get back in this match. And now she's got the left knee taken out from underneath her by Dizzy Jet. Top turnbuckle. Dizzy looking for a middle rope superplex to the Hall of Famer. That does as much damage to you as it does to your opponent. Cover. Only a two count from Dizzy Jet. Overhead kick by Phoenix. Into the corner again. Another running elbow from Dizzy. A knee lift by Beth Phoenix. And another one. Snap Mare into the scarf hold from Dizzy. Keeping Beth grounded. With Beth able to escape it into a side headlock. And now the power of Phoenix on display. And Beth showing signs of wear in this match. Just being taken to by Dizzy Jet. And now a modified torture rack here by Phoenix. Innovative maneuver there. Dizzy able to escape out of it into an arm drag. Beautifully done. And now Beth looking for a perfect plex cover. Rolling a two count off the perfect plex. And now Beth, oh man. Big time move using her whole career, the glam slam. Cover. Well, Dizzy must have been right under the bottom row, but I swear she was well within parameters of not getting the rope break, but running clothesline by Phoenix. That's a little bit of a rookie mistake there by Beth. Now Beth working the neck. In the middle and lower back of Dizzy Jet here. Collar and elbow tie up and whoa, Dizzy getting the better of Beth Phoenix on the test of strength there. And Dizzy might be trying to look wear her down again for another disc track, but when you hit somebody with your best shot, you really start to cast doubt in the back of your mind. Cover. It's still only a two count for Beth Phoenix. You can tell that Dizzy is starting to get a little frustrated now. And what's Dizzy looking for here? Spinning clothesline. Discus clothesline, I believe she calls grunge. Cover. The new move, picking up a big victory for Dizzy Jet, knocking off Beth Phoenix in her hometown. As we take a look at the replays here, it's still unbelievable that Beth Phoenix in her career steps into a 2KCW ring and absolutely takes it to Dizzy's limit. 
And we see the Grand Slam. We got to see a replay of this because I swear that Dizzy's hands were not underneath the bottom rope, but can't argue with our officials because they're the ones that make the final call other than higher ups, but that's what the referees get paid to do, but. Dizzy Jet with a big victory here at Unfinished Business. Congratulations to Dizzy Jet. As your record here in 2KCW still continues strong. As we now move on to our main event. Ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a first blood match. A match that has not been seen in the public eye for a long time. As the Norse horse himself, Eric Anderson, is making his way down to the ring for his second shot at the 2KCW Heavyweight Championship currently held by Leroy Punch Beef. Again, Anderson requested this match saying that he wore the wounds of battle in their Iron Man match at 2KCW-a-thon like a true warrior as opposed to Punch Beef would probably wear it in and cowardice. And then now Punch Beef decides to wear the 2KCW Heavyweight Championship on his way to the ring. On his potential last night as champion, he decides to wear the damn belt around his waist. The disrespect by Punch Beef. As Leroy Punch Beef is set for his first title defense since winning the title at 2KCW a thon. our main event of unfinished business a first blood match between Eric Anderson and Leroy Punch Beef and the rules are simple the first two make their opponent bleed wins Obviously, this is a very special situation given the landscape of wrestling in some aspects is the death match in the hardcore style, but for those who like to keep it clean and use a stipulation like this only for for added measures to build or cap off a rivalry. And a hurricane runner from Punch Beef. Of course, there are no disqualifications, no count outs. Another swing neck breaker from Anderson. Can Eric Anderson withstand the onslaught? by Leroy Punch Beef and win the championship here. Anderson, back elbow by Punch Beef and Punch Beef with a running drop kick. An elevated drop kick at that. Now, 
dodging back to the left arm. And that's the arm that Anderson uses on the Valkyrie strike. Wonder if we'll see that later on in this matchup. We'll have to wait and find out. And now wrenching the right arm. Now we're on the left leg. Punch Beef is dissecting Anderson here. And a running bulldog from Anderson. Now it's Anderson wrenching the arm and another neck breaker. You know, Anderson looking for a weapon under the ring. What's he going to find? Oh, boy. He's found himself a sledgehammer here. Not able to use it, though. Punch Beef able to have him drop it. Drop kick missing. Running uppercut didn't miss. From Anderson, back body drop by Punch Beef. Barely catching his foot under the the head of that sledgehammer. And the three amigos from Leroy Punch Beef. Of course, there's also no pinfalls or submissions in this match. And Punch Beef with a high high angle power bomb. Almost like he could have been going for like a gory special or gory bomb. Anderson trying to get momentum building. Punch Beef cutting him off the pass. Another power bomb from Punch Beef. I think Punch Beef may be able to go on to the top rope to hit the, the slap chop. Yes, you heard me right. I said the slap chop. That's why he named it. I didn't. So. And there we go. There's a slap chop from Eric. From Leroy Punch Beef. Anderson keeping firm control of the head as he dumps Punch Beef up and over the top rope. We got our camera crew ringside. Whoa, clothesline missing. Working the legs, standing drop kick by Anderson. And now these two are just brawling outside the ring. Trying to get any kind of advantage they can. Sweeps the leg. Those punch beef and continuing to work on the left leg. Focusing on the knee in particular. Punch beef now. The brain buster. To Anderson. Punch Beef just trying to figure out what to do next, but Anderson able to shove him off. And Anderson had the high ground, at least for the moment. Fireman's carry position. Or Punch Beef into a gut buster. Punch Beef is one disturbed individual. We all know that, but what lengths will he go to to retain his title here? Innovative maneuver there from Punch Beef. Running drop kick again. Anderson shoving him off. Now Anderson with a swing neck breaker. Barely had Punch Beef connect the back of his head on the head of that sledgehammer. Very dangerous situation there. And here comes Anderson. Flying in hot with the Valkyrie strike counter. Power slam. Power slam counter by Punch Beef. Anderson. Continuing to stay alive in this matchup. Leg drop. 
onto the champion, and now he's wielding the hammer again, right into the hip. Right into the side of the hip on Punch Beef. And a running STO, taking down the champion. This match can end at any point and anywhere. That's the uncertainty of a match like this. Now Punch Beef. Series of clotheslines. Into another elevated drop kick. And Punch Beef is still feeling it here. In this match. And one again for another brain buster. Anderson's tailbone catching the head of that sledgehammer. That's got to be a super uncomfortable position. In the very least. And now Punch Beef again. Another power bomb. And Anderson's shoulders. And center of his back going again into the head of the sledgehammer. The welts have got to be forming on Anderson. But the goal of the match is to make your opponent bleed. Not to give him black and blue bruises all over who knows given the mentality of punch beef maybe he wants to go for internal bleeding but that's neither here or there rule is for external dropping Anderson on top of the steel steps and that would definitely get yourself the victory Anderson able to shake him off. Forearm chop. Anderson up and over the back. And Anderson wrist lock. Or a straight jacket neck breaker, excuse me. And now he's got him up. Into Odin's bidding. Odin's bidding. If we haven't seen very often from Anderson, it's always the Valkyrie strike that ends his matches. What more is it going to take to put away Punch Beef? And now Punch Beef's been busted open. Eric Anderson is your new 2K CW Heavyweight Champion. As we take a look at the replays, Eric Anderson wins the first blood match and wins a the title there's that power slam counter from the valkyrie strike <laughs> 